got to remember to turn on the recording. So when we are looking at maxima and minima, whether it's local or absolute, and I'll explain the difference in a minute, is if I come in increasing into a singular point increasing and I leave decreasing, then we say that at that point, we have a local or maxima will happen at that point. Now, you gotta be careful because maxima and minima are not a point. Maxima or minima is the y value. So when we say the max, we say the max of 16 because that's the y value that is associated to that point. It is not an ordered pair. It happens at the ordered pair, but the max is the y part. So the max or min is the y part. And then I tell you where it happens. So a max of 16, and it happens at x is equal to negative 2. When we describe the um, minima, then I come in to the point from left to right, decreasing. And I leave the point increasing. Again, it's telling me that at this point, based on that behavior, that that's where the minima happens, but it's not the minima. The minima is the y part. It's always the y part. So the min and max are the y parts. So it's not an ordered pair. Min and max are not ordered pairs. It happens at that point, but we don't write it. the answer as an ordered pair. We tell you where it happens and what it is. So in this case, the minima happens at x equals 2, and it is negative 16. So the minima and maxima are based on the y value. I, has, I know it happens at the point. It happens at the point the point 2 comma negative 16, but that's not how we write the answer. This is how we write the answer. We don't write the answer in minima and maxima as ordered pairs. Because when I ask for the minima, I'm asking for the y value. And when we start doing application problems, it will make a lot more sense. So the other thing is, no. So the question is, um, does it have to be wrote in a, in a specific order? No, absolutely not. What I could have said is equivalently, I could have said at x equals 2, the minima is negative 16. So it doesn't matter how I write it, as long as I don't write it as an ordered pair, and I'm telling you where it happens. So you're always going to say, I need two things for it. I need to know where it happens. Which is the x value. And I need to know what it is. which is the y value. And it doesn't matter how you write, if you write the first one being what it is and the second one being where it is, or if you say it at x equals the, the min or max is. So it doesn't matter the order, as long as you tell me those two pieces and not as an ordered pair. Because when we ask for a minima, it is actually the y part. If we ask for a maxima, it is the y part. I'm going to stop and ask, what other kind of questions do you have for me? So the other thing is, is I said I was going to talk about local versus absolute or global. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to erase all the work I did for a minute so we can talk about absolute versus local and global. So we know where the minima and maxima happens to be. We know what they are. And the way that we determine whether or not we have an absolute or global, so when we're talking about absolute, you'll see absolute 
which in some math books they use the word global. These are equivalent for us. And my spelling is probably atrocious, but now I'm here for math. Thank God. Um, so you may see those two words interchangeable, absolute or global. And when I see absolute or global, that means the highest or the lowest point. Otherwise, it's just local to the area. So when I take a look at this peak, I'd like to think that is that is the highest point, but it's not because this graph is going on forever. Because that graph is going on forever, this is local. So it is the highest peak in some interval, but it's not the highest peak on the entire domain. Just like this, looks like it's the lowest but because the graph is going down forever this is also local so when we say the absolute or global that means it has to be the largest output value on the entire domain or the smallest output value on the entire domain and because the graph goes on forever in fact this is a possibly a cubic graph when we have a polynomial, which we're going to talk about later in this quarter, of degree 3, you will never have an absolute. You're not even guaranteed any, but you will never have an absolute, either low, um, or global uh, maxima or minima. What kind of questions do you have for me? So when we are looking at a maxima or a minima, it is on an open interval because it has a parenthesis. That a comma c... A comma C is not an ordered pair, it's an interval here, so the interval notation is A is the first X part, so in this, this is X1, and that's X2, so it's an open interval, so A comma C is not an ordered pair, it is an open interval, and the way that we define a maxima or a minima is it has to come in or out, increasing and decreasing, so think about that as you look at the graphs down below when I'm asking you to find whether or not we have maxima or minimus and whether or not they are absolute or if they are local. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this and I want you to take a look and determine whether or not we're going to call this A and we're going to call this B, whether or not A or B or both have got maxima or minimus and whether or not they're absolute or they are local. As we take a look at A, the way that we defined the maxima or minima is I have to come into the point increasing or I have to come into the point decreasing. And I don't get to include the end points. So I'm not going to include that end point and I'm not going to include that end point. Because the way that we define it is I actually have to come into some open interval in which I have an increasing decreasing. Because my domain on this function starts here and it ends here, that I can't contain that endpoint in some open interval because I have some values that I'm trying to force into my domain I don't have. So in particular, if I'm trying to look at this point right here, or that part of the graph, that those part of the x's, those are not part of the domain to begin with. So that's why I don't get to include the endpoints. So I'm not going to include any one of these endpoints. So both the endpoints are going to be excluded. And then if I... Okay. And then um, the other question, the other thing that we have to do is it has to come in increasing and leave decreasing for it to be a maxima. Or if it's a minima... It has to come in, um, it has to come in decreasing and leave increasing. So I'm coming in decreasing and leave, leaving increasing. Now, because both of these points right here, if I build an open interval around this point, that it fails to have that increasing decreasing. 
So this point is not going to be a, a maxima or a minima. The same is going to be true for that one. So this one, for, for part A, there is no, and we call them extrema. Extrema is just the overall arching max or min. It doesn't matter if it's local or absolute. So for A, there is no extrema. There's no max. There's no min. Because the way that we define our increase, or the way that we define our max or min is it has to come in increasing, leave decreasing, or come in decreasing and leave increasing. Because of this part right here being constant, because this part of the graph being constant, it fails the increasing, decreasing, and there's no open interval I can contain each one of those points. So for A, we have no extrema. We have no local. We have no absolute max or minima. There's none there. How was that? What kind of questions do you have for me for A? The answer is no. We don't include the endpoints. Now, when you're in calculus, what you will learn in calculus is that we are going to call those something differently, but they're not, they're not going to call them as... Um, a maxima or a minima. So we don't get to include the endpoints because the way that we define a maxima or a minima in general is we have to be able to contain that point we're looking at in an open interval. And that open interval has to be a part of the domain. So if I say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contain this particular point in the interval between, say, negative 6 and negative 3, but negative 6 isn't part of the domain because my domain starts at negative five and it's inclusive. So it fails, the endpoints fail, even if they have dots, it fails the way that we define a maxima or a minima. So we don't get any of the endpoints. So does that answer your question about endpoints, whether or not they get to be anything for us? Okay, so we're going to take a look at our second one then, knowing everything that we know, that we don't get to include the endpoints. We don't get to include a point that leaves or in comes in as a constant. So the only point that we can consider is this point right here. That's the only point we get to consider. And so I ask myself, okay, I have, I have a graph that comes in decreasing, leaves increasing. Because it comes in decreasing and leaves increasing, we know it's a minima. And then we just have to determine whether or not it is the absolute or if it's local. We say it's absolute if it is the lowest or the smallest y value in my domain. So I look at my graph and I know that it is the absolute smallest because on my graph, my range on my graph, this particular range starts actually at one and ends at four because my smallest y value is one and that is my minima, that is my smallest number. My minima is absolute or global. So I have a global or absolute min of 1 at x equals 1. Because it is the absolute lowest or the absolute smallest y value that is on my domain. What kind of questions do you have for me? Now is we're going to move down to these two examples. And if you can clearly see where the maxima or minima happens, then you're going to state it. We want to know where it's increasing, decreasing, and constant. So I'm asking for the intervals of increasing and decreasing. 
And then I want to know if it has any maxima or minima and whether or not they're local or absolute. So I'm asking for the intervals of increasing, decreasing, and then whether or not I have any maxima and whether or not it is local or absolute. Now, I, it did include the equations on here just simply so that we get used to seeing these are what the graphs are that are associated to them. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to move in a little bit better so you can see it hopefully a little bit better. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to go ahead. And what I'm asking for is the intervals of increasing, decreasing, whether or not I have maxima or minima, and whether or not they're local or absolute. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to work on that. Put that on. So the way that is a refresher, the way that we describe increasing is on some interval, some open interval, that the x, as x increases from left to right, my outputs are getting larger. My y values are getting larger. My function is increasing. So in this interval, and it's the x values that produce it, in this interval between negative 5 and 1, I am increasing. So in this interval, the graph is going up the hill. We say it's constant if for some open interval that the y values or the outputs are all the same the entire time on that interval. So in this particular case, from 1 to 3, it's constant because all the y values are the same. And then my last part is decreasing. We see it's decreasing on some open interval if along that those x values, all of the y values are getting smaller as I read left to right. So this one is decreasing from 3 to 5. So just as a reminder, what it means to be increasing, decreasing, and constant, it is the x values that produce the y values, that produces the y values to be the same, produces the y values to get smaller as we read left to right, or get larger as we read left to right. So I ask myself as I'm looking at A, where am I decreasing, where am I going downhill? So the interval in which I am decreasing or going downhill is these x values. So I am decreasing from negative infinity. And I know it's negative infinity because it's going on forever. So it started at negative infinity. Now remember, these are the x values that produce the decreasing or increasing. So it's the x values that produce the y values. So I am decreasing from negative infinity to 0. And I don't get to include zero because we say it's in an open interval in which this happens. So it is decreasing from negative infinity to zero. It is increasing from zero to infinity. So I'm decreasing in those areas. Now what's happening is I'm coming in decreasing. I am leaving increasing. If that happens, then we know that at that point that I'm going to have an extrema. In particular, as I take a look at this, I have a minima, and my minima is the absolute lowest or the smallest y value. So we have an absolute or global min of, let me see, that's, so these are multiples of 2, so that's negative 5 negative 5 at x equals 0. And I know it had to happen at 0 because I see that this one ends at 0 and this one starts at 0, non-inclusive. How was A? So we have increasing from negative infinity to 0. We have decreasing from 0 to infinity. And we have an absolute maxima and minima. Does anyone have any questions on that one? Okay. If there's no questions, then we're going to move on to these. So we're going to, again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find uh, maxima and minima. And we're only going to spend a couple of minutes on these because I do need to get to the example. 
that you're going to see on your homework. So I want to make sure you know how to do the example here so you can do it on your homework. So we're going to um, just give you a minute or two to go over these and then I'll give you the answers. And then we will do the last example which is going to be needed for your homework. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you the answers on C and D because we're in time constraints. So in this interval from here to infinity, we are decreasing. So we are decreasing from negative infinity to about negative 0.6. And I am decreasing again in this interval. So in this interval, so I do a union symbol. I am decreasing from about 0.4 approximately to 1. And those are my intervals of decreasing. I am increasing in this region and in this region. So I'm increasing and it's going to be from negative 0.6 to put to 0.4. Now notice I had to make sure that I had no gap. So I had to use those two places in which I have a gap in decreasing. That means that in that gap of decreasing, that means I must be increasing or constant. And then it is going to be union with, I start with 1 and go to infinity. So that's how you do the increasing, decreasing when you have more than one interval in which you're increasing or decreasing. So you'll use the union symbol, especially on your homework. Now, the maxima and minima is I actually have a minima here and I have a minima here. So this one is an absolute because it's the smallest value. So I have an absolute min of, and it looks like it's about negative 1.6 at x equals. And again, I look at my intervals of increasing and decreasing. I come in decreasing to negative 0.6, and I come out increasing at negative 0.6. So I know it happens at negative 0.6. So I have an absolute. I also have a local minima. And my no local minima of, and it looks like it's about negative 1 at x equals. And again, I'm coming in decreasing and leaving increasing. So I have a local minima at um, 1. So I have locals. Those are my, 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 my minimas. Right here, I have a maxima. I have a, a high point, and it's local. So I have a local max of, and it looks like it's negative 0.7 at x equals, um, well, the break point is 0.4. And it's a local max because the assumption is, is that these are going up forever and ever and ever. How is that? What kind of questions do you have for me on that one before we do the application problem that you're going to see on your homework? The question is, how could that be a local if it's not the highest point? So local just means the highest point. Now, where I am, Mount St. Helens is locally the highest point, but it is not the highest point in the Cascades. So Mount St. Helens is a high point in the Cascades, but it is not the highest point. So to me, in this region, Mount St. Helens is the, is the highest point, but it's local to me. But it's not the highest point in the Cascades. The highest point in the Cascades would be the absolute. And then if we're talking about high, highest point in Washington State, or even in the United States, that if I look at the highest point in the United States, Mount Rainier is not the highest point within the United States, but it is the highest point locally to this region. And if the highest point I believe is in Colorado or it could be in Wyoming or, or maybe even in Montana, the highest point in the United States, but that's not the highest point within the world. The highest point within the world is Mount Everest. So Mount Everest is the absolute highest point in the world. Everything else is just the highest point local to wherever you are. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. 
So let's take a look at their last example here because this is what the homework's, there's gonna be one like this on the homework and I wanna make sure you know how to do this before you leave. So this is the graph. Now, you don't have to know anything about quadratics. You just need to be able to pull information off the graph. So this is what the graph will look like. Again, this is gonna be something similar on the homework. A backyard farmer wants to enclose a rectangular space for a new garden within her fenced backyard. She has purchased 80 feet of fence of wire fencing to enclose three of the sides. And she will use a section of the backyard fence as the fourth side. So the first thing we have to do is figure out what the area is. So I'm going to draw a picture. So what I know is I have some fence already. That's already there. Then she's going to enclose three other sides with that 80 feet of wire fencing. There's other three sides. So I'm going to call this X. I'm going to call this X. I'm going to call this Y. Because I can't assume that it's going to be, because it's rectangular, they didn't say square. I can't assume they're all the same measurements. All I can assume is that two of the sides are the same, and then the third side, I don't know what it is. So what I do know is that the x plus x plus y has to equal 80 because she has 80 feet of fence to fence in that blue space there. So I have 2x plus y is equal to 80. Now I want an area. Area I can see is going to be x times y. So, but it says I only want it in x. So what I have is I have two equations and two unknowns. So I have to solve for one of the two equations, and in particular, I'm gonna solve for y right here. So I'm gonna say y is equal to 80 minus 2x. So I can replace this y right here with x, and now I'm in a function of x. It's all x's. When we say a function of x, that means all my variables should be x. So my area as a function, don't forget to use function notation, is equal to the x that I started out with and then my replacement for y. My replacement is 80 minus 2x. So that's how you're going to set up the expression is I can, if I was you, I'd consider drawing a picture first. Then you're going to use the information that you know to find the perimeter equation. Then you're going to find the area equation and lastly, you're going to replace one of the two variables with what you solved for on your perimeter. Then it's asking for the domain of the area. Now, this particular graph goes on forever, downward. But in terms of the area, it makes no sense to do this. So if you're thinking about this, this is where even though my equation right here my equation or my function doesn't have any restrictions in and of itself because I don't see x in the denominator and I don't see a square root. But this is an application problem, so it makes no sense if the length is my x value, it makes no sense to have a length of zero. And it makes no sense to have a length of negative numbers. So my domain, my length has to be more than zero. It can't be zero because otherwise that would what would be happening if my length is more than zero, or, or is equal to zero, then I just have a straight line, and I'm not fencing anything. I'm just putting a fence up, and if you're trying to keep cattle in, or you're trying to keep deer out of your garden, if you just put up a straight linear line, they're just going to go around it, and they're going to eat whatever they want to eat, and then everything's going to be destroyed. Or they're going to leave, and somebody else is going to have some nice fat cows, and they're not yours anymore. So you've got to make sure that you realize that this domain does not include zero. Where does it end? Well, if I have anything larger than 40 on my length, then again, I'm doing a straight line. So I can't have anything larger than 40. I actually, I can't have anything larger than 40 because if I have something larger than 40, then somehow I have an area that goes negative. Because the graph itself, this graph, this Y, this output, this graph represents the area. And if I go below the x-axis, then I'm going into a negative area, and we can't do that. So I go all the way up to 40, but I don't get to include 40. 
Because if I included 40, I'd have the same problem as I had when I had zero. It would be a straight line. Now, as I, now as I do my very last part is, they're asking me on the very last part is, looking at the graph that's given to me, can I determine what the maximum area is? And can I determine what the length is that produces the maximum area? And this is why we do not give maxima and minima as ordered pairs, because this is my output and that is my max value. So the maximum area is 800 at a length, because that's what x is equal to, a length of 20. Because if you said to somebody that's putting up a fence, your maxima is 20, 800, they're going to look at you like WTF. That doesn't make any sense. But what you could say is, if you let the length be 20, then the maximum area you can enclose is 800 square feet. How was that? And I apologize for going over. I know I went over. I apologize for going over. How was that? Because this is going to be on the homework. <laughs>